jet engines are pretty cool, and luckily they are pretty simple as well. In principle all you need to do to have a jet engine is throw stuff backwards pretty quickly, so you yourself are pushed forward. The intensity of the pushing force depends on the weight of the stuff and the speed at which you throw it. Conventional jet engines throw hot combustion gases through the back at very high speed, and because of that, they are like fans on steroids. Here's the thing, hot gases are not that heavy, are they? What if you used something heavier? The other day I was cleaning a wall in my house using this machine that puts out a thin jet of water, and I noticed that the jet itself was creating this pushing force that made it want to go backwards. I think I have an idea. Why throw gases when you can throw liquids? They are much heavier and they should create more propulsion, right? If I want to see this water jet thing happening, I need to find a way to throw water backwards. But you can't really throw liquids, can you? I mean, you can. It's just not very efficient. Liquids need to be pumped, so what I need is a pump. There are many types of pumps, but I guess the easiest one to build should be the centrifugal pump. The centrifugal pump is a very simple pump that works on a very simple principle. You have a casing and you have an impeller. While the casing contains the fluid, the impeller is this rotating thingy with paddles that pushes the fluid outward due to the centrifugal force, which is actually not a force, but a constant change in momentum that due to inertia creates an outward tension that in essence is derived from the nature of rotating movement. Like in this clip where the guy is thrown out of the merry-go-round. To build my pump I used what I had at my disposal. And what I have is, well, 3D printers. Let's print some stuff! It didn't break, which is nice. So here we have the motor. It is a DC motor uh, that is very high power. It can go up to 10,000 RPM. Yes. <laughs> For the lid that would enclose the casing, I wanted to use transparent acrylic, so I could see what was going on inside the pump as it was working. I can't really 3D print acrylic, but that's fine, because I can now machine it. I got a CNC machine. We met online and it was love at first sight. My 3D printers are still a little bit jealous, but with time they're gonna become besties. I don't really have a lot of experience with CNC machining, so I decided that I should start by cutting some soft material that I don't mind wasting because it's disgusting. I machined the tomato. I used Fusion 360 to create the G-code and the machine cut through the tomato like it was nothing. It was only halfway through the tomato being machined that I realized this was a very, very bad idea because my machine is gonna smell like tomatoes forever now. So don't forget to subscribe to make my sacrifice worth it. After happily destroying that tomato, I felt confident in my abilities. So I got some acrylic and I machined the acrylic out of it and it turned out horrible. So I slowed down the machine a bit and the part came out worse. This forced me to slow down the spindle and that actually worked. Look at that, so clean and beautiful. Time to assemble and test. And it's ready. Let's test it out. It's working. More. Oh, it can't go. It can't go faster than this. Yeah. It's not. Uh, it's not super impressive, but uh, it's doing its job. So. This was a little bit depressing, and I think I know the reason why. Firstly, the design is not the best, and also I'm using a DC motor. 
which as you know DC is for what I'm going to do now is use this BLTC motor is much more powerful uh, it's basically an induction motor a courtesy brought to us by our lord and savior Nikola Tesla uh, I'm going to 3d model a new design around this motor and see if we get some pumping action well powerful pumping action let's do it It is ready. Let's test it out. All seems good and well, but I have the remote in the wrong hand. Okay, slowly now. Ooh. Oh boy! Jesus Christ! That's some power right there. <laughs> How about some slow motion, eh? So this second design worked much better, but I was still not convinced. If I want a powerful water jet, I need more power. So I got something. Let me introduce you to this little guy. This little guy has 2000 watts of power and can rotate at a max speed of 60,000 RPM. This my friends is not a motor. This is a monster. With great power comes great design. So I decided I should probably design a new pump with a fancy volute casing. What a nice fit. Look at that, I have a stand. Now I need the screws. Let me do a close up on this belch. Yeah, that's not gonna be easy to screw in unless I use the machine. Okay, wait a sec. Okay, this is the first test uh, with uh, the insane motor. I think I'm going to get a protection glasses because 60,000 RPM is kind of scaring me. Yeah. Uh, correcting the shot. Can you see this? No, you cannot. It's too low. This is better. Should be working now. Is it rotating in the right direction? Seems like it. Is it doing? Oh, it produces quite a lot of air. Yeah, it's producing wind. Uh, now, what, what do I need? I need I need water. Yes, I need uh, feedings. I need to connect this to water. I need a nozzle as well. I have a nozzle. It's here. Muyakacha, it is I, LEG. And now we interrupt the program schedule for another session of... Look at that. So beautiful. And goes one, and goes two. Okay, moment of truth. I cannot shake. I'm shaking. Beautiful. That concludes the ASMR session. Moving on. Seems to be doing fine. Super excited! Okay, so here's my idea. I'm gonna use this old skateboard and I'm gonna put this reservoir on top of it that I'm gonna fill with water. Then I'm gonna put my good old Supreme pump here, which I'm gonna connect to the tank. And that's basically it. The pump throws water backwards and the skate goes forward. I mean, that's the idea at least. I 
I'm a, I'm a great engineer, am I? Look, now I can open it because this is, you know. So I think I need, I need to cut this a little bit. That's my only chance. I'm gonna ruin this, this valve because I'm stupid. Anyway, moving on. Oh, it opens. A shitty solution from a shitty engineer. Let's keep moving. I need to test it for leaks. Leaks! Silicon! The water jet skateboard was ready, but before I show you the first test, I have something to confess. I forgot to turn on the microphone on the camera. I know, I'm a very professional YouTuber, ain't I? It's a shame because Katrina during the first test told me a very funny joke. She also told me the lottery numbers, what's going on on the Area 51, and also the meaning of life. Unfortunately, all I can share with you is this shot of the skateboard moving forward. There's also this cool slow motion shot. Look at that. You can see the impeller rotating the water into a crazy high pressure spiral that comes out of the back as a beautiful water jet. Pretty nice. Anyway, I did more tests. Okay, so I think the nozzle is just too big. Um, I'm using a 15 millimeter nozzle. I'm gonna use maybe a seven millimeter or an 11 millimeter and see if it works better. I'm gonna 3D print it. Be right back. Well done. The new nozzle seemed to be doing a great job at keeping the stream straight and going backwards. But before I show you the test on the skateboard, I have to tell you something. You see, to power my monster motor, I used a 16.8 volt battery. And if you know anything about brushless DC motors, you know that the speed of the motor is proportional to the voltage of the battery. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, on my first test I didn't really have the battery completely charged, but on this next series of tests, it was. And it was also spinning at an insane speed. What the hell? What happened? <laughs> oh man! It went through the box. I'm gonna need a new box and I need to print a new engine. That's insane! It's a good thing you were wearing protection glasses. They were on my forehead. I mean, you were. They were on your forehead? Well, that's why we're siblings. <laughs> My pump is dead again! Sometimes I just have to admit that my 3D printed parts reached their limit. My resin impeller wasn't able to handle rotating at 45,000 RPM inside a thick liquid like water. And that's fine, I guess. I can use my CNC machine to make metal parts now. Unfortunately, I didn't really do that for this video, because I can barely cut acrylic. I don't think it's a good idea to jump into metals. As always, the 3D files for the pump are in the description of the video. And if you want to replicate this project, but you don't really have a 3D printer, well, I have great news for you. 
On my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Isaac's new tie, and he suggested that I could strap one of my jet engines to some kind of vehicle. That sounds insane enough. I also gave away another 3D printer to Wilbur Garcia in a Discord challenge. If you're not a part of our Discord server, use the link in the description. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Well, this is everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!